Problem gambling is a problem. So far this year, problem gamblers have lost more than $3 billion on poker machines alone. That's an amount that's growing by the second, and that is something we should talk about. Think about this. There's about a 50% chance that this machine makes more money than you. It also doesn't need sick days or annual leave, and it takes far fewer toilet breaks. And you should see a doctor about that, by the way. Last year in Australia, pokies scarfed down $9.8 billion in small change. They're like the cookie monster with a less adorable eating disorder. The biggest game in town by far is with poker machines. It uh, out outranks casinos by a factor of five or six to one. All that cash isn't coming from high rollers. Pokey venues are disproportionately clustered in disadvantaged areas, swarming around our poorest people like protesters around a new mosque. They are the victim uh, of a ruthless industry that is quite deliberately targeting these disadvantaged areas. Pokey players are far more likely to have a gambling problem than other gamblers. One in six regular players develops a serious addiction, and I am not using that word lightly. This is a real clinical addiction with all the tragedy that comes with it. Stress, depression, and a staggeringly high suicide rate. I would have burnt through $100,000 in a three-year period. Every time I thought I hit rock bottom, I, uh, I soon found out I was wrong. I lost a lot of time with my children and a lot of... Um, I lost my home, I lost everything. A bit like cigarettes, pokies are designed to get you hooked. Every aspect of the machine is managed and manipulated to make the games as compelling as possible. The lights, the music, the ergonomics of the seat. They even let you win occasionally just to make sure you don't go anywhere. Pokies aren't called the crack cocaine of gambling for nothing. People think they're playing the poker machine, but in fact the poker machine is playing you. I am an addict and I will always be an addict. I'm going to carry this with me forever. People are killing themselves because they don't know what to do. So the government should definitely do something about this, right? Well, in 2012, the Labor government took decisive action in an incredibly piss-weak way. Julia Gillard agreed to implement mandatory pre-commitment where people would set a limit and it would be a binding limit. However, the then Prime Minister ultimately reneged on that deal. Then, in 2013, Bill Shorten and co supported the coalition in reversing Labor's own reforms. Now, that alone should make your brain explode, but so should this. Effective measures are needed to help these people. Damn right they're needed. So why would you abolish every one of them? This bill will repeal the position and functions of the National Gambling Regulator, the automatic teller machine withdrawal limit, the trial on mandatory pre-commitment and dynamic warnings. But mainly, the amendment was designed to hamper all pokies regulation to the states. But those states rely on pokies revenue to survive. The states and territories will earn $5.9 billion in taxes from gambling this year. Three billion of that will be from pokies. They get an average of 10% of their total revenue from gambling. So they're literally profiting from people's misery. Imagine crack, heroin or ice being legalised so that governments could grab their share of the profits. Oh sure, I should point out a portion of pokies taxes goes to helping problem gamblers, but that's like mugging someone to help victims of crime or fighting short attention spans with cute cat videos. He's, he's, stuck, he's stuck in a bucket and he can't get out. Instead of making it harder for pokies to destroy lives, pollies are making it easier right around the country. Queensland's allowing more machines per venue. New South Wales can't make new laws without the gambling lobbies OK. And Victoria just announced measures so pointless that even the gambler they picked to spruik the plan said it won't work. This stuff is so obviously wrong that I don't even have to make a joke to explain it. It shouldn't be this easy to make politicians look this bad. And it shouldn't be this hard to get meaningful change. But it is. And it's not going to get any better. Because the truth is that governments of every stripe right around the country are leeching off our addiction to feed theirs. You spend your time.